What is up besties? Welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Scotty Holiday. I'm a queer creator and a huge Star Wars nerd, so if you're into either one of those things, please consider subscribing for more. Episode 3 of The Bad Batch Season 2, called The Solitary Clone, is out now and in this video, I'm going to be reviewing and giving my thoughts on the episode. And this episode was really fucking good. But before I get into my review, please make sure to like the video and leave a comment letting me know your thoughts on Episode 3. I'm putting out weekly reviews for each new Bad Batch episode as they air, so make sure you're subscribed to my channel so you don't miss out. You can check out all my Bad Batch content at the link in the cards and the description as well. Now, let's get into this review. So episode 3 introduces us to the planet Desix, an independent system and separatist holdout made up of a huge fortress surrounded by farmlands. Shortly after the planet's introduction, we see the arrival of Imperial Governor Groton and a group of TK troopers who have come to Desix to establish and enforce Imperial rule. They're greeted by Desix governor Tawny Ames, who refuses Imperial rule, taking Groton and his troops hostage with the help of a battalion of battle droids. From here, we catch up with Crosshair at an Imperial facility on Coruscant and learn a little more about what happened to him after the events of Season 1. Crosshair meets with Vice Admiral Rampart who informs him he's cleared for active duty after spending 32 rotations stranded on Kamino, and assigns him a new mission under another Imperial clone commander who turns out to be none other than Commander Cody. Cody, Crosshair, and a battalion of clones are being sent to Desix under the guise of discussing a diplomatic resolution to retrieve Governor Groton and secure control of the city. But before they leave, Crosshair and Cody have an interesting discussion about clones who've questioned Order 66 and Imperial loyalty. Cody finishes the conversation saying, well, good soldiers follow orders, and something about the way he delivers the phrase makes it seem like he's only saying it to reassure himself that what he's doing is right. Recognizing their true intentions before they even arrive, Tawny Ames has her droids prepared to attack, shooting down the Imperial ship before they're even able to land, and continuing to fight the survivors of the crash, sending waves of battle droids, destroyer droids, and even commando droids at them until Cody and Crosshair finally make their way into the city bell tower to confront Ames. Holding Groton at blaster point, she explains her terms to Cody, saying she'll release Groton and his troops once the Empire acknowledges her as the rightful governor of Desix and the planet's independence. While her and Cody go back and forth, I love Tawny's line explaining how unjust the Empire's actions are, explaining all she was doing was defending the planet from a hostile occupation. Cody responds with another line that sounds like he's trying to reassure himself of his actions, saying, The Empire seeks to establish peace and order throughout the galaxy, but Tawny's response is what really surprised me. She tells him that she tried going the peaceful route, working with none other than Mina Bonteri on a treaty with Republic Senators to end the Clone Wars, but it was really Chancellor Palpatine who rejected the treaty, showing her that peace was never an option. From here, it seems like her words really get to Cody, who decides to lay down his blaster and removes his helmet, offering her just that, a peaceful solution. He tells her, we both lived through one war, let's not start another. And this act of compassion is what gets Tawny to agree, releasing Governor Groton to them. Then, the peace and compassion is cut short when Groton orders Cody to execute Ames. Cody questions the order saying he promised her a peaceful solution, but Crosshair complies and this is when it really seems like everything Cody's been trying to reassure himself about the Empire really falls apart. In the final scenes on Desix, we see the beginning of the Imperial occupation with a Venator looming over the city in the sky, TK troopers rounding up citizens, searching their homes, and what I assume is taking of the planet's resources. We also see Cody, Crosshair, and the other Imperial clones board a transport to leave as another transport arrives with even more TK troopers. After they arrive back on Coruscant, Cody stops at the battle memorial, asking Crosshair if the Empire is actually making the galaxy better. Crosshair tells him they're just soldiers doing what needs to be done, but Cody disagrees, saying that unlike battle droids, the clones make their own decisions, and they have to live with them in return. At this point, it truly seems like Cody is shaken up about everything that's happened, questioning more than just the mission, but the Empire itself. Then, in the final scene of the episode, we see Vice Admiral Rampart giving Crosshair his next mission under a new clone commander, and when questioned about Commander Cody, Rampart advises him that Cody has gone AWOL. 
A line that really stuck out to me during this conversation was when Rampart tells Crosshair, clone loyalty does not seem to be as advertised anymore. Funny how these clones around you keep disappearing. And that's the end of the episode. I really love this episode, and to be honest, I really didn't expect much after the two episode premiere. Episode 3 really surprised me and served as a great reminder of just how good Star Wars animation stories can be. I've never really understood the Commander Cody love, but I really loved his character arc in this episode. Throughout episode 3, Cody seems like he's trying to reassure himself of his place and purpose under the Empire, but this final mission on Desic serves as a turning point, ending the episode with him deserting. Instead of continuing to blindly follow orders, Cody allows himself to choose, because just like he says to Crosshair, he has to live with the choices he makes. This inclusion of the battle droids, Imperial clones, and TK troopers really showed how each group differs from one another. Unlike the clones, every aspect of the battle droids were made to be controlled, and the TK troopers choose to serve the Empire. The clones have the ability to choose, but it was taken away from them by the activation of Order 66 in the inhibitor chips. It's really sad if you think about it since their purpose was technically fulfilled with the end of the war, but now that the effects of the chips are starting to wear off, we're seeing clones start to question their own ideals with the orders of the Empire that they were blindly forced to serve under. The clones were made to fight for the Republic, but now that the Republic and everything it stood for is gone, what really is their purpose now? They know the Empire is phasing out and replacing them, so why would they choose to continue to serve when they're being treated as expendable, and less than people? This episode does a great job of showing this, specifically in the scene when Cody, Crosshair, and the Imperial clones are boarding their transport to leave Desix. Cody is the last to board, but stops on the ramp to watch another ship land, bringing more TK troopers, and even makes eye contact with Governor Groton who is there to greet them. This scene really felt like a visual embodiment of the phrase, out with the old and in with the new, and I think Cody realizes this too. I honestly felt really bad for him in this episode because I felt like I could really see the inner turmoil he was dealing with, but I was so happy for him when we learned he deserted. I also really like Tawny Ames a lot. Her ideals and connection to Mina Von Terry and the Clone Wars series itself were great. I love that she had a ton of Separatist droids under her command, and this episode actually did a great job of making the Destroyer and Commando droids seem really scary and threatening. Now, of course, I can't finish this review without talking about Crosshair. First thing I noticed was how dark and empty his barracks were. I also loved how the other clones in the cafeteria got up after he sat down at the same table as them. His life honestly seems very empty and pointless since he literally wakes up every day at the Empire's beck and call. It's sad, but I don't really feel bad for him because he chose this. <laughs> Lastly, I just want to mention how I love to hate how ruthless and brutal the Imperial officers are being portrayed in this series. I feel like it started with Andor and is continuing in the Bad Batch Season 2, between Rampart killing Wilco in the second episode to Groton commanding Tawny Ames' execution in this one. Governor Groton even makes the comment, put her body in the square, let it be a warning to the rest of them. Like, how much more evil can they get? And like I said, I love to hate it. But what did you think of episode 3 and do you think we'll see Commander Cody again later in the season? Let me know down in the comments below or hit me up on Twitter so we can chat more about it together. I'm putting out weekly reviews for each new Bad Batch season 2 episode as they air, so make sure you're subscribed to my channel so you don't miss out. You can catch up with all of my Bad Batch videos at the link in the description and on the end screen of this video as well. Please consider checking them out and leaving a like, I really appreciate all of your support. To keep up with all my Star Wars content, make sure to subscribe to my channel and consider following me on Twitter, Instagram, and TikTok at ScottyHolidaySW for all my latest updates. Thank you all so much for watching and as always, may the force be with you.